Hello there. Hey, where are your hard hats and ear protection? What about goggles? What? Oh, right. Yeah, no, I know. Of course, I realize they're not really here. I was just, you know, setting the scene to uh, illustrate important safety principles. Yeah, so anyway, I'm Leo. And as you might have guessed, I am a safety officer for the LEGO Space Team. I work with the Safety and Mission Assurance Team. That means if it has to do with launching, flying, or landing a spacecraft, our team is in charge of making sure everything is safe for the flight crew, ground control, and even the general public. There's a lot of different ways we do that, from developing and implementing safety policies and procedures to testing and quality assurance of systems and vehicles. I specialize in making sure Kate and Kyle stay safe as they're traveling to and from the moon. You might be asking yourself, what kinds of hazards could they run into in space? We spend our time thinking about things like space debris that could hit the spacecraft, the effects of zero gravity on astronauts' health, and even how to help flight crews deal with the loneliness and disconnect they might feel from being so far from home in such a small space. But the number one hazard we're concerned about is one you can't even see, space radiation. And when we're talking about deep space travel to the moon and someday Mars, the risk is even greater. So what are we doing to protect crews from radiation? We're developing significant protective shielding for spacecrafts, equipment for measuring astronauts' exposure, and alerts for things like solar flares that can create dangerous levels of radiation. Now, I could give you a long and boring lecture on what the astronauts will do if that happens, but why would I do that when I can show you with the help of a couple of awesome NASA clips? As NASA plans missions to go back to the moon and then onto Mars, predicting the sun's activity to protect astronauts from space radiation is one of our biggest priorities. To be able to forecast solar energetic particles, we need to know how the sun energizes them. The sun is made up of electrically charged particles called plasma. As this plasma moves, it builds up energy inside its massive magnetic field. This energy is usually released in two types of explosions. Flares are intense flashes of light. Coronal mass ejections are giant eruptions of solar material. These solar eruptions send shock waves across the solar system, accelerating particles as they go. These are solar energetic particles, or SEPs. They consist mainly of protons and possess a lot of energy that can affect satellite measurements and humans. At NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, the Community Coordinated Modeling Center, or CCMC, is dedicated to testing prediction models. Working with global partners, they use data from NASA satellites at different vantage points and models to figure out how solar explosions behave, including how shockwaves energize SEPs. And as we get better at predicting, we get more time to prepare. On the surface of the Moon or Mars, astronauts can go underground or build shelter with local materials. But in transit, astronauts can only be protected with what's on the spacecraft. NASA's space radiation specialists are testing different ways to do this. One strategy they tested on the Orion spacecraft involves crew members barricading themselves with as much mass as possible in the center of the spacecraft. Other possible techniques in development include vests that add mass and electrically charged surfaces that deflect particles. See what I mean? That was a lot more interesting than I could have made it. Although I was considering doing a dramatic reading, I could give it a try if... Huh? But you haven't even heard it, and you don't know, they might like to... Okay, rude. Well, I guess we'll <clears throat> skip the performance and go right to someone that I know you'll be excited to hear from. Pedro Lopez is a safety officer, just like me, and he's worked on the Artemis missions. His job was to make sure the Orion crew capsule, the space launch system rocket, and other exploration systems met certification requirements for transporting and housing human beings in space. And he's the one that gave safety and mission assurance approvals that the mission can fly. Today, he's here with us to talk about what goes into making sure launch is safe and successful. Thanks, Leo. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Pedro Lopez. Uh, I work at NASA as a uh, safety lead. As a safety lead, um, I got the opportunity to work with a great team of folks uh, to take a look at how the uh, different parts of the spaceship that's going to take the astronauts to the moon 
uh, during the Artemis missions uh, is built and de designed and built with safety uh, as one of the main um, uh, objectives. As a kid growing up in Mexico, space exploration, going to the moon, uh, getting on the space shuttle, all of those were really, uh, I guess, far away dreams for me. I had never even thought of the possibility of, of doing that. But just like any other any other kid, I always uh, dreamt of becoming an astronaut or, or doing those kind of things. I got my bachelor's and my master's degrees from the University of Texas, Pan American. And then came to Houston, uh, worked in different uh, programs with NASA, and then decided to go back to school uh, and uh, get my PhD from Rice University, uh, which I finished about seven years ago, as I worked on the different pro uh, programs here in, at NASA. I realized that it's not just math and science. Uh, you also need all those other subjects that you may not think that are related to engineering. You need reading, you need to uh, be able to read and learn about the uh, previous experiences, previous projects, so that then you can uh, use what worked, what didn't work uh, to, to fix problems. And then you need to, to uh, be good at writing also so that you can report on the things that you did and how you fix the different problems so that uh, future generations can learn from your, your successes and your failures. At NASA first, I started working as a technical manager for the Space Shuttle S uh, Systems Engineering and Integration Office. So I got to work uh, with um, many folks on making sure that as the shuttle was launching, that it would make it to space uh, safely. Working in the Space Shuttle, I got to uh, s go to Florida and actually uh, got to work a few launches and uh, inspect the vehicle for the launch and then after it landed. So I think that was uh, one of the best experiences that I had uh, here at NASA. Uh, once the shuttle was retired, I got to uh, work on a few other roles and then I landed a role uh, with the a team that, that developed and put together the plans for what is now uh, known as Gateway. Uh, so I got again to work on different parts of, the, of that space station that's uh, going to be built around the moon. And again, making sure that everything that was designed, it was keeping uh, safety of our astronauts as one of the main things as we were looking at all the different functions that were going to be a part of that vehicle. As the Artemis SMA uh, safety lead, uh, one of the uh, my responsibilities is again a, a part of it, part of a team, a great team that that looks at different different aspects of safety. But my main focus was on human rating, which is um, checking everything that a a space vehicle needs to provide so that it can launch uh, humans to space. Uh, so anything, any any safety switch, any safety function that the uh, vehicle needs to provide, I had to look at the design and the build of the of the vehicle to make sure that those little things were included there. Uh, looking also at the operations, what what the astronauts are going to be doing to make sure that that those operations met those requirements, and then also um, making sure that again the vehicle provided um, different uh, cap capabilities, so that in, if something went wrong, the astronauts would have the opportunity to deal with the problem, so that they can again make it uh, safely back to Earth. Uh, one of the things, as uh, Leo mentioned, was uh, the, uh, the space radiation. And so that is one of the aspects that we would have to take into account as we looked at the design of the Orion, what, what, what were the things that the uh, crew could actually do to protect themselves from space radiation, and then also on Gateway as you put together the habitat to uh, figure out different ways to protect the crew so they can s spend some time around the moon and then come back to, to Earth and, and not be affected or as affected by, by, the, by, the, by the radiation. Then as we checked, again, the, the different uh, requirements, and they say we, and then we would say, yes, you, you've met this requirement, you've met this requirement, and we would uh, get to the point where we could say, yes, uh, uh, Orion, yes, SLS, we, uh, you are ready uh, to fly the Artemis mission. So, Leo, they tell me your mission this uh, week is all about in-flight safety and alerting the crew to any possible hazards. Sounds like important work to me. Can you fill me in? I'd be happy to give you a rundown. First, let me thank you for taking the time to tell us about your very cool job and the work you do to keep everyone safe and the mission on track. So, Pedro guessed it. This week, we're talking about hazard alert systems. 
we're going to learn about how we can protect flight crews from things like space weather, including all that radiation we talked about earlier. First, let's check out another quick video about it. Just as early explorers had to endure weather as they traveled to new lands and explored new areas, astronauts, when they go on space travel outside the Earth's magnetic field, will have to endure space weather. This space weather would include things like galactic cosmic rays, which are remnants from supernova, uh, and also solar storms, which include things like solar particle events and coronal mass ejections. So just like the early explorers, NASA's mission is to bring all of the astronauts home safely. And to do that, we're investing and in looking into these shield design strategies that include ways that mitigate exposure from all forms of space weather. So we look at habitat design and, and overall vehicle optimization to reduce the in-flight risk from solar storms. But then we're also looking at material design uh, and other vehicle optimization strategies to reduce the risk from uh, long-term exposure to galactic cosmic rays. Obviously, our friends at NASA are working hard to make sure our astronauts stay as safe and healthy as possible on these incredible missions. And now it's your turn. This week, you'll be the ones designing a solution for keeping our flight crew safe. Here's my friend James to tell you about it. Hey, Leo. I'm super excited to be here helping out with staying safe in space. It was cool to hear from Pedro about some of the ways NASA keeps everyone from the grounds crew to the astronauts safe throughout the course of a mission. This is gonna be a blast. Let's get into it. Think about the kind of dangers we face on Earth. Things like storms or maybe even tornadoes and hurricanes. Luckily, we have alert systems that warn us when these dangers are coming. Astronauts don't have to worry about wind or thunder and lightning, but they do have to be ready for space weather, which includes things like radiation from solar energy storms. Grab your engineering design notebook and write down some questions you have about dangers of space exploration. While you're at it, think about these questions. How do you solve a problem or prepare for a danger you can't see? What kind of protection do astronauts need when exploring space? Okay, now that the wheels are turning, it's your turn. You're going to create a prototype model of something that can alert astronauts to danger. Think about what type of device will work best to alert astronauts and ensure their safety. What types of alarms have you seen before? Will your alert system include lights or sound? Will it throw a ball or maybe have a mechanism that makes a wave? Think about what the best way to get everyone's attention might be. And figure out what information is the most important for your device to give astronauts. Start by brainstorming and sketching out your ideas for a system. Be sure to explain the task you want to complete. Then build, test, and rebuild your model. Don't be afraid to try different ideas. If it doesn't work, that's okay. Try something new. So, what do you think? Are you ready to accept this mission? I'm sure you're gonna come up with some amazing stuff. This has been really fun and I'm already looking forward to next week. Thanks for having me, Leo. Thanks, James. And thanks to all of you for hanging out with us. Now, please proceed safely to your engineering design notebooks. No one likes a paper cut and start planning. As always, we want to see your designs, so remember to submit your work on the LEGO Education Community or post on social media with hashtag build to launch. Your build could show up in our next mission briefing. See you next week.